Welcome back to part two of the set of videos looking at um, data screening for factor analysis using SPSS syntax. And for this part, what we're going to look at is locating the respondents that are unengaged. So there are participants that would have not varied their answers much for the 30 like art scale questions that we introduced in video one. And then we're going to look to remove those. And then after that, then we're going to look to for imputing the missing values. Now, in video one, we introduced the data set, and we so we know who the unengaged respondents are. They're the third and fourth participants. So we just want to write some syntax that will locate those participants and then try to remove them. Okay, so the statistic that I would actually use to locate, uh, I suppose, the unengaged respondents would be measuring a standard deviation. So I'm just going to put in a small comment here just to let you know, keep track of what we're doing. And as mentioned in previous videos, and you see there under the description to this video, there's a link to a, a few files on Google Drive, which which will have the syntax there. And you can, um, and that syntax then will have uh, additional comments. So I just, I'm just i creating a, a variable here, calling it SD for standard deviation. In the function group over here, I'm just leaving it as all. And then down in function and special variables, I just press S bring me down to the standard deviation. I'll put this up here. This then is where we specify the measurements or the variables that we want to work out the standard deviation for. So you say Q1, you can see that there's a comma there, Q2, then you say press comma, Q3. You can do that for all 30, but as I showed in uh, video one, it's nearly faster if you actually just go to the syntax. So even though we're in, if this is incomplete at the moment, I'm just going to go to the syntax by pressing paste. That will bring us back here. And I'm just going to come back up here to the previous part of code that we would have had where we would have already um, stated all the measurements okay so which are these guys here i'm just going to bring this down here to save a bit of time that's just much faster than input inputting them manually i'm going to highlight this press ctrl r then come to the spss file and we can see now we have a new measurement down here at the very end we can see that our first two uh, respond measurements here, the respondents were engaged, but they, have, they we, as we saw in the first video, that they, they had a lot of missing responses. So uh, we left them, we removed them. Within here, we can see that our second and third participant, their standard deviation is quite small. Now the first, the, the third participant, that participant uh, answered one to all the questions. So we can see that when we go across here, that it was one to all these questions. So there was no variation. So that's why your standard deviation is zero. The second participant answered four for 29 of the questions and answered five for one of the other questions. So that participant then standard deviation is quite small. Now, it varies to what you would use as a kind of a cut point to what would be kind of highlighting that a standard uh, that a respondent is engaged or not engaged. As a kind of a starting point for me, I'd often use 0.5. Now, it's not a case of that it's very clear cut that anybody that is less than 0.5 remove. I would just actually look at the respondents, look at um, how they actually vary the responses and try to make a call on it then. If I'm unsure, I might just leave in the respondent and then proceed with the factor analysis. And then if there's an issue with the factor analysis later on, I might come back and remove that unengaged, if potentially unengaged respondent. So similar to, I suppose, when we were looking at uh, trying to determine how many questions would lead to missing values we said 10 percent as a guideline for the in the first video so here is a guideline for a, a low standard deviation i would look at it as 0.5 as, as a guideline but that really is dependent on how many questions you have and your sample size but for our, for the purposes of this recording we can clearly see respondent three and respondent four are unengaged so what we're looking to do now is i suppose create a, a, an extra bit of selection where we're going to exclude question as respondent one or participant one two three and four Okay, so we're going to add on to our select cases here. So we did this in the first video. So we're just going to add on to this. So we're going to say we're missing is uh, less than 20, less than 10 is in less than 10%. And we're SD because that's our last me measurement that we just worked out there. Where that, the standard deviation is greater than 0.5. So that should work out fine for us. We'll press continue. We can press paste. So we obviously, we're just trying to keep track of every step that we're doing here for the manipulation. This is where we're looking at deselecting, or I suppose what we would say here is looking at, I suppose we could just say update uh, select cases like that. We'll 
So we have we haven't uh, generate we've generated the syntax here. We actually haven't run it. We press Control R, but it highlights it. Come back to the data set. I always do this because I should see it lines through them. We can see now we've lined through the first four participants, which we knew that they were the participants because we, the data set was structured to make it very straightforward for us. But this syntax that we've we've created here now. This can be used for multiple measurements, or it doesn't matter how many measurements you have or how many what your sample size is, this syntax will all, will actually always work. Okay, and that's what makes I suppose uh, the effort to creating the syntax quite useful is the useful uh, is how you can actually use it then going forward. Okay. Now we would have said in um, the previous video that the goal for this I suppose is doing kind of leading towards a factor analysis, even though the video isn't going to actually do a factor analysis. So we can see here that we don't we're going to be removing these four participants now you can make two decisions here you can actually just leave it as a select cases where you actually have your lines through these four participants but i suppose i know that i'm not going to be including them in the factor analysis later on so i'm actually just going to remove them all together okay so a few ways we can remove them what i find useful is i'd actually there's another option in the select cases now we could have done this all in one go I'm just breaking it up into kind of minute steps, I suppose, just for the purposes of uh, the, the learning at the start, okay? But in select cases here, if we come back to that, you can see down here it says delete, delete unselected cases. So if we do this correctly, and we'll just do true case, so if this is done correctly, we should end up with a sample size of 96. Now, I always would always be very slow of deleting somebody because or deleting questions because I would say, oh, look, where's the track record of doing that? Well, that's what the syntax is going to give us. Okay, so I'm just going to press paste to this. Press paste, come to my syntax here. So this is just where I'm going to look at removing, remove four participants. Fit this there like that. Okay, so we'll highlight this. Press Control R. We could have done that in the previous step, but I suppose again, it's just to break it into stages. So when you do this, you can't, you don't see that. It seems that the first four participants are missing. Okay, they seem to be gone here. Now, just as a sanity check, we should come down here. We should see that there's 96 rows of data, and there is. So that now means now we have a sample size of 96. So we've actually just located those first four participants. Now, for the purpose of this recording, the, the issue, the participants that were causing an issue were the first four. Obviously, for a real life data set, they wouldn't necessarily be the first four, but the technique will still work. Okay, so that's quite good. So now we're at the phase of where we actually can now impute for the missing values. So we're looking at the next couple of uh, participants here that have two missing values each, and we want to impute for them. So the approach we're going to use here is we're going to look at um, we're going to look at re um, replace missing values. Now there was one additional thing part that I did for this is I looked at including this grouping variable, and it was more. This is just an interesting thing to be aware of. Now, you might not, when you're doing your own data set, you have your own data set, you might not have a grouping variable. So this, what I'm going to mention here, might not be of uh, concern. But if you have a grouping measurement, how you impute for one group might necessarily be the same as how you might impute for the other group. So often what I find useful before I do the data imputation is I split my file based on the type of group that I actually have. I find that that can be quite good. And I'm just going to show you what I mean here, okay, with this. So. I'm going to go into the data set here, and I'm going to uh, split the file. I'll split the file based on the group, like this. Press paste, so I have the bit of syntax then to that. Okay, so that's the split file by group. Now, you might have no groups, and this might not be applicable, so you can kind of just leave this bit out. So that's that bit, okay? Now, what I like find useful, no, I suppose, we know what the answers are, but if you didn't know what the answers are, what was, is useful is just to run off frequencies on all your measurements. So we've 30 measurements here. Now we know that question one up to question 18, the first 18 measurements have missing values. But if we didn't know that, how would you actually know which ones are potentially problematic? So I would generally just run off frequencies in this case. So I go to uh, descriptive statistics, frequencies, highlight all the 30 measurements that we have here, put them across. Now I'm only interested in, um, I suppose, I'm only interested in how many is actually missing per question. But I suppose another thing that could be of use maybe is just working out the median, because if we're going to impute, which we are, for missing values, and the fact that our questions are all Likert scale questions, then using the median as your uh, imputation technique is, uh, would be quite reliable. So I'm going to just press continue here. I don't necessarily want to see the frequency tables. You can maybe yourself. You could be interested in that, for the, but, but for the purposes of this video, that wouldn't be needed. So I'm going to deselect there. I'm going to press paste. So come over here. 
So this is just the frequency of, I suppose, what we say of missing values. So we'll run that off. So this is where we actually have them. Now we know which questions are missing. Now the reason I wanted to split the file here is which one, question three. If we look at question three here, for group one, the median is seen as three as the response, while for group two, the median is seen as two. Now for both groups here, you actually have one missing value. So if we uh, replace the missing values and we replace it by the median, we'll group this one here will be replaced by the value of three, while this one here will be replaced by the value of two. And I think that's that's quite important that when you're dealing with groups that are essentially independent, that how you impute for one might not, does not necessarily have to be the same value as you impute for the other. So that's what this step is just kind of highlighting here is I would feel the importance of actually splitting the file, imputing for them individually, and then move, proceeding then after that. Okay, so we're now going to actually impute. So we're going to go to transform and we're going to replace missing values. What, I've, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the missing values by the median. So I'm going to select here. The method will be by the median. And I'm going to use of all. And then I'm just going to highlight. Now, we could be very, I suppose, just highlight the questions with missing values here, which will be the first 18 questions. Um, but I suppose I'm just going to actually highlight them all just to kind of show, because it's going to, this, this can be nearly just, I suppose, the faster way of doing it. And for the questions that don't have any missing uh, answers, values for, it uh, will ignore them. Anyway, okay, so if we put this across here, that's quite good. We press paste. So now we have our syntax here. Where have we gone here? So here's our syntax. Okay, so that's quite nice. So this is going to replace missing values with median. Okay, so press put stop, run this guy off, press control R. Okay, so this is where we have it. So this is where, if you look, so we're looking here at group one. So for group one, for the first eight, no, for the first, how many here? Sorry, so for the first 18, sorry, yeah, of course, first 18 questions, there was one missing value. So that's what it's telling us there. It's telling us how many were missing. And then you can see down here for the next couple of questions, there was none missing, so it didn't do anything with those. And then when you come down to group two, it's telling you the same. For the first 18 questions, there was one missing, so it imputed for them. And for the remaining remainder, it didn't do any imputation there because there was none actually missing. Okay. Then I suppose what I find can be useful then with this is just doing a check at the end that if I run off a of frequency again, that the, my new measurements will uh, have no missing values. And that's actually what I, what I said there was kind of important, that, that there are new measurements. That when we come to SPSS here in the variable view, we have our first 18 measure, or sorry, our first 30 questions here. Um, but what SPSS does is it actually creates 30 new ones. Okay, so now we actually have 30 new questions, which are the ones that have no missing values. So they have, you have applied your data imputation technique. Now this for me then kind of creates additional work, and that's what the when we look at the points that we have for these set of recordings, that's what leads into this kind of four point here of formatting the data set. That what we can see here is we have 30 new questions. So we don't need the first 30 now anymore. With these 30 new questions, the names are quite long-winded, so we might want to tidy them up. The labels are quite long-winded, so we might want to tidy them up. Do we need one decimal place for all of them? I would feel that you should look at tidying that up to making it zero decimal places. And over here, the measure should actually be replaced by ordinal. So by applying this replace missing values uh, technique, which is very good, it just leads to a requirement then to format the data set. And that's what the fourth, I suppose, point for these set of uh, videos is going to address. And that will actually be what part three of these set of videos then will focus on. Okay. But just before doing that, um, I'm just going to run off just, I suppose, the check to say that our new measurements have no missing values. I find that always useful to kind of see look, what way the data was pre and post. Okay. So we're going to go to the frequencies. Now I'm going to take out the original. So these were the 30 that had the missing values in them. So I'm going to take them out. And then I'm going to come down back to the next 30. So these are the new 30. Put them across. Press paste. So because I just I like having this kind of step recorded just to show that I've checked. Check um, measurements. We'll say after imputation. Okay. So highlight that. Press Control R. And when you go across here, so you can see, we we know we've 96, there's, they're half by F, so 48 in each group. And if we go across here, we can now see that we have no missing values. 
Okay, so that's actually quite good. Um, the only issue that I'd have with just using this function is that you just end up with a bit of work now with formatting your data set. But uh, this is then where I feel the syntax can be very good, is that you're going to spend a small bit of time initially formatting your data set, but then the syntax that you, you create can be used going forward then uh, if you come have, I suppose, if you end up doing the same kind of data screening techniques in a, for a different data set, okay? So when we come back for the part three and the final part to today's set of videos, we're just going to look at the work that has to be done for formatting the, the data set, and then we're going to just look at reversing the order of the negatively worded questions. That'd be quite important for leading into doing a factor analysis at a later stage. Okay, so hopefully you're finding those two points of interest of use, uh, the syntax of benefit, and you'll come back then for the remaining two points. All the best.